Hi guys, so welcome to another power up video. So for today's session, I will show you on how to make this time moving per second. So this will be a really quick video and let's get right into it. Okay, so first things first, we will design our canvas. So in background image, let's select the image that we want to add here. And for the name of our screen or of our canvas, we'll change it to say home page all right and then let's minimize this one then let's just add a simple image so let's go to insert and then under media we'll select image and then let's just resize this one and under image properties we will select the image or the icon that we want to embed here uh, let's just resize it in the middle of our canvas. There you go. Okay, so now we have designed our canvas. The next step will be we'll add our timer control. So to do that, let's go to insert and then under input. Let's just scroll down and the timer is here. So we'll select that and let's just make this a little bigger. Say let's say 15 font size or let's say 20. So this timer would help us as to how our app will respond after a specific amount of time passes. And what we will do is we will set its properties to determine how this timer would look and behave. But before that, let's just add two labels. First label is for our date and second label will be for our time so for us to add a label we can go to insert and then select label okay and then let's resize this one to uh say 20 as well then let's change the font color to white all right and then this will be our label for uh date and then we'll just copy this one and then we will change the name to label time then press enter all right so we have our first label as date and second label for our time i think we need this to be in the middle and then let's make the font size around 30 so that we can see what will be the value that it will show now let's go back to our timer and for our timer we will name this as say tmr like timer control something like that and let's go to the properties of this timer control so for repeat we will turn it on for auto start we will turn it on as well so what we want to happen here is that when we play this application, we want our time controller to start right away. And if it ends the duration, it will repeat the process. Well, for the duration, instead of 60,000, that will be 60 seconds. We only want to have 1,000 milliseconds or one second. So what will happen is that when we start the application it will always auto start and then the duration is only for one second and it will repeat the process then the next step is for us to create a variable and set a value into that variable in this controller so let's go to advance and then on timer start what we will do is we will create our variable time in second and we will use the function set and then the value for our time in second will be the function now so the main purpose of this now function is for us to get the current time and also the current date so we will just copy this on timer start and on timer end then press enter okay now we have set the properties and also variable for our timer what we will do next is we will use that variable coming from the timer control 
to our two text box or to our labels, right? So the first label would be our date. So say just to show to you, let's go to text property of the label. We will change it to time in sec, which is the variable that we used to identify the now function, right? Okay, now we will do the same in our second label, which is the time. So we'll copy time in sec and then we'll paste it in the text properties. Then press enter. But we have a problem. We can see both date, day, and also the time. So obviously, we need to create a certain function that will only get that date today and also a function to only get the current time. So for the first label, let's go back to text and we will use the text function to format our time in sec variable. And the format is this. We want to see the long date format of the date. So we encounter an error. We need to remove the this one, right? And then also the double quote at the last part. Okay, great. Now we can only see the current day to day and also the day. Now for our second label, we'll also do the same. So we will format the value in our time insect variable. So let's select the label and under text properties, we will use the text function again. And then comma and the format text that we want to see and then close it. So the format would be R minute second, is it AM or in PM? And as you can see here, we can see that our time is divided into R, minute, and second. So when we play this, what you will see is that the time is running every second. And we will just close this one. Now we already have our date label and time label working based on the value of our time controller. The last step actually is quite easy. We'll just hide this time controller. So to do that, you select the time controller, then properties, and under visible property, we'll, we will turn it off something like that so if we play our application you would see here that our time is working per second and that's it for this tutorial hope you learned something and see you in the next video bye